I'm Judy Stiles. Thank you for joining us for Spotlight on Senior Issues. This series of programs is focusing on the fastest growing segment of our U.S. population, senior citizens, and some of the topics of concern to them, perhaps their children and maybe their grandchildren. Today we're going to focus on a local agency that has served seniors in this community for many years, the Area Agency on Aging. Joining me, Stephanie Denham and Stan Heater. Thank you very much for being here. Thank, Thank you. A uh, little bit of background, Stan. The agency's been around since 1979 here in this region. Yes. And you serve four counties? We do. We serve uh, Barton, Jasper, Newton, and McDonald, the four in the, in the corner of the southwest part of the state. Now, even though this show is being recorded and we're talking about what's happening in Joplin, if someone's watching across state lines or in other counties, they probably have a similar organization. They would. They would. I think virtually every, every county in the country is, is uh, handled by at least one AAA or area agency on aging. So, yeah, okay, they so would have similar programs. So they can find those resources, even though we're yes. talking specifically yes, about the Joplin region today. Right. Background on the organization, you are indeed a nonprofit organization. We are. We're a non uh, nonprofit uh, corporation. Uh, we get most of our funding uh, through the federal government, but it comes through the state of Missouri. Mm -hmm. So it's passed down to us. Um, we also write uh, some local grants. We get uh, contributions and donations from individuals and from uh, some of the companies uh, in, the, in our area. Right. And as we're talking today, I mentioned Joplin. Stephanie, we're, your offices are actually in Joplin. Yes, ma'am, we're located at 15th and Missouri here in Joplin. Okay, so as people go along, if they have questions, and we'll let them know how to reach you and where to find you and sure. so forth. Absolutely. Well, Stan, how do you, as the executive director, answer the question when somebody says, well, what does the Area Agency on Aging do? Well, primarily our, our mission is to um, help seniors to live at home uh, independently for as long as they can. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes health issues and things like that force the issue, but we want to make sure that they're not having to go into long-term care because they don't have a meal, because they don't have some service that we can provide them at home. And I know your organization provides the meals, but you have a lot of volunteers who help you accomplish what you need to do. Without our volunteers, we would really be hurting in all the senior centers and in central office. Mm -hmm. They deliver the homebound meals or Meals on Wheels they also help us with many activities and things that we do inside the senior center. So we're very dependent on our volunteers. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the program that the seniors are the fastest growing segment of population. Are you in, then indeed seeing an increasing demand for those services as that population oh, grows? Without a doubt, without a doubt. And as the, the baby boomers uh, begin to, to age, which we are at this point, mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the, there's going to be a much greater demand on, on all social services, but especially on area agencies like ours. Now you see, you know, baby boomers, people might say, well, what defines a senior? What age groups are we talking about? In our organization, anybody over 60 years old mm -hmm. is a senior. Mm -hmm. So, so some people, that's you know pretty young still. They're that's thinking, still I, I very young. Yeah, yeah. That's very <laughs> young. <laughs> so 60 and up, um, you have services, and today I'd like to focus on some of those services. And I think we'll start off with nutrition, since okay. that's one of the things you mentioned, the senior centers and the food opportunities. So right. um, I guess a lot of times people are maybe a couple, just two people, they find it too hard to eat cook that meal or it's hard if you're single to cook a nutritious meal so you're there to help fill in the gaps. Yes we do fill in that gap. A lot of times it is just that they they may be their family's all gone, the kids have moved away so it's just the two of them. Mm -hmm. It is harder to get used to cooking for just one or two people than it has been. A lot of times it's just they want to get out of the house, socialization opportunities, health and wellness opportunities so they can come to the senior center for those other opportunities for them to do things with their community and enjoy activities. So how many on-site senior centers do you have? We have in? seven centers in the four-county area. Okay, so of those four counties, you have the seven locations yes, in those communities. So okay. the, the centers are where you'll serve the meals. Are they noonday? What time of day is you serve this? We serve con congregate meals at 1130 mm -hmm. at all the sites. And then we have the homebound meals, which generally leave between 10 and 1030 to get to the client's home for their noon meal. Okay, and that's what people refer to as meals on wheels, the, right. the yes. deliveries of those. Yes. Uh, those take volunteers, I imagine. The people who are bringing those meals are people who are yes. giving their time. All the senior center meals are hot meals, and they are all delivered by volunteers. Is that a continued need for your organization to find more volunteers to oh, deliver? Oh, always, always. Yes. And that's one thing we talk about a lot. <coughs> As the baby boomers um, are becoming the generation that hopefully will take over the mantle of volunteerism, mm -hmm. Our generation is not necessarily known <laughs> for, for, for being volunteer-minded. Mm -hmm. So it's something that, would, that we work on all the time and something that will be a challenge in the future, I'm sure. I know I've read articles that saying that as the baby boomers retire, their view of retirement is different than maybe their parents. Sure. Yes, because like our parents, when they retired, they wanted to help others. They retired at 60 
or 62, many of them did. Mm -hmm. And so they were able to help their communities. The younger seniors are working, working unfortunately, longer. <laughs> working longer, so they, they cannot do the volunteer opportunities, nor do they want to. They, mm -hmm. they are more active-minded. They want to do things, be involved in their communities by participating in those activities instead of helping, helping others, others, unfortunately. So that's where your challenge comes in. Right. And people say, well, I'm sorry, but I'm traveling this week, or I'm doing exactly. these other activities and tying <laughs> Going to together. see the grandkids. <laughs> right. yeah. you know. Well, let's talk a little bit about the homebound meal delivery. If someone has a situation, what are the criteria where someone can then receive the food at their home? Our criteria is 60 years of older, mm -hmm. homebound or otherwise isolated in their own home, or unable to prepare their meals. Okay. Many times as clients, it's been on the program for quite some time mm -hmm. because of an illness or something, or we have a lot of times it's just short term that they may have fallen and gotten hurt, broke their arm, and able to prepare meals for a short time. So we step in and provide those meals. How do people get involved in the program? Do they call you? Do they, they can have to call apply? any of the senior <laughs> centers or call our central office, mm -hmm. and we will get you in touch with the right person, get you set up on meals. Right, and that's something that once the arm heals or something is better, they're back on their own, they can right. then, then they're, continue it. they're back right. to the active lifestyle. We encourage them to go back to the senior center for the socialization. Mm -hmm. We have many activities at the senior centers that our seniors enjoy doing. Now, I know people watching, if they're seniors, are going to say, well, what does this cost me? <laughs> what does it cost for that? Our program is, is not a cost, per se. It's okay. a suggested donation of $3.50 for each meal. Mm -hmm. So it is not a, a set fee. And no eligible client will be denied a meal for the inability to pay. Right. Well, you must then depend on some good funding to help provide these meals. Yes. We do. We do. And most of our funding, what we do basically is uh, structured from the Older, Older Americans Act, mm -hmm. which is from like 1964. Um, and those are the rules that we work under. And, and when she says, you know, that, that we can't deny a meal, those are those kind of things, you know, that and you have to be 60 years of, old, of age or older. Right. So. So the people then are getting the meals. Describe what a typical meal. What did they have delivered perhaps today, the types of food they might have had? Um, a typical meal is an entree, mm -hmm. uh, fruit, vegetables, dessert, milk, and bread. All of our bread at the senior centers is generally, uh, unless it would be a hamburger bun or such, generally home-baked mm -hmm. bread right there on site at the senior centers. We, I think we're the only agency in Missouri that still bakes our own bread, and wow. that's something that we, we pride ourselves in. We, mm -hmm. we bake our own bread there on site. So you have some dedicated cooks that are doing that work Yes, ma'am, we do. <laughs> we have many staff that have been with us for many years. I, I have them schooled. When I come over, they give me a hot roll. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to test they them are before delicious. you send them out. <laughs> they are delicious. Yeah. So they're really getting a good nutritious meal. I mean, a very as far as the vegetables, meal. the vitamins, yes. you know, what they need. It's not a TV yes. dinner, perhaps. You know. right. No, and, and all of our meals are, our menus are made up in our office, and then a dietitian does have to sign on off on them. Mm -hmm as well as we have to follow the state guidelines for those meal programs. Okay. And I've heard from people that those meals are really pretty generous portions, that sometimes seniors say, I can't eat that old meal in one sitting. Yeah. I may have it later in the day as we, well. We have many seniors that say that it's too much food for them, mm -hmm. yes. But then it helps them. You deliver Monday through Friday, so that Monday might give them Friday. some weekend food for them. Uh, yes, and, right. and a lot of times, especially, I'm going to say the homebound meal clients, mm -hmm. a lot of times that might be the only very good nutritious meal they have. Right. They may have just cereal or just snacks in the morning or a, a lighter dinner at night. So they have this meal that's very good, very nutritional, and plenty of food for them. And I imagine the medical community really appreciates that as well. If somebody is homebound, they want to make sure they're getting the nutrition, that they're recovering, right. whatever it might yes, be, and tying all of that together. So uh, the challenge of feeding yourself at home is then alleviated by the Meals on Wheels program. Let's talk about the senior centers. So people, you know, they can cook at home, but I'd, like I say, it's tough for two of us to cook. We're going to come in there and we're going to gather with others. And what type of activities do you have while they're there? At the senior centers, we have some that have pool tables. We have some that have... Um, reading rooms, we have televisions, we have Wii games, we have exercise programs in almost all of the centers, mm -hmm. treadmills or equipment. Computer um, lab. Computer labs in mm -hmm. almost every senior center now. We have many activities, a, a wide variety of things for, for them to do. And again, the socialization is, is just a key part of that 
day. Visiting with the others. And yes. Now, Stan, you mentioned computer lab. Sometimes the older generation is a little hesitant to learn computers. Do you have programs that teach them? You know, they want to talk to their grandchildren and sure. show them how to use that computer. Yes. Yeah, and we have had, uh, at, at various times, uh, when we have someone that wants to, to, to volunteer that's kind of computer savvy, mm -hmm. we've had classes before, and, and I think it's really helpful, you know, to, if nothing else, we're going to teach them, you know, how to get on the computer, uh, how to set up an email account, how to email back and forth between uh, family and, and, and friends. So, yeah, it's, it's something that we've done in the past. And for someone who doesn't have the computer at home, they can come to the center and sure. use it there. Yes, we have. And our central office also. Okay. So, they, you know, if they want to follow up on their email or send a message or, you know, yes. communicate that way, that's right. an opportunity for them to have that, pro for providing that services. I know that you have an insert in the newspaper, the Joplin Globe, on a regular basis. So, yes, so, we do, once uh, a month. The outreach communication is an important part of what you're trying to do. It is. It is. It, you know, just like we talked about the baby boomers not necessarily being that much into volunteering. Mm -hmm. um, also, you know, there, there's a challenge to, to get the younger seniors into a quote-unquote senior center. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I think the stigma is that it's just going to go in and sit a bunch of old people sitting around eating lunch. Well, that's not what it is at all. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of activities there, and, you know, the challenge is to come up with ac activities in the future that will draw people in. So. so you see yourself adapting those as the mm -hmm. younger generation retires? You know, you're, yes. what can we Very do to attract so. new people? Yeah. <laughs> Very much so. And networking and trying to do activities along those lines. So a lot of information to bring them in and maybe meet their peers. You know. Correct. Do you run into people, you mentioned retirees earlier, that maybe they've worked all their life, they've had their little group that they've worked with, the people, their peers, and then they retire and it's suddenly like, what do I do now? Or I don't oh, know anybody sure. outside of work. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> I've had friends, you know, that it, you, we talk about, you know, when are you going to retire? Well, I, you know, I want to retire by this age, but, you know, I just, I don't want to be bored. Mm -hmm. I don't want to sit around. I don't, don't want to go to the coffee shop and have donuts every morning. And, uh, you know, so there, there's a, a certain amount of fear there as to what's my life going to be like after I retire. The unknown. Exactly. The <laughs> unknown been doing is this for very so many scary. years. Yeah. Very scary. That, that together. So you'll have resource information, give them opportunities how they can get involved. Sure. Um, do you find that sometimes the volunteers, in addition to helping your organization, they want to know what other community organizations they can help out? Yes, so. and, and in our community, all of the not for profits work very closely together. We mm -hmm. all work hand in hand. Um, we have a lot of clients that do participate in several different organizations. So we're all. We all help each other out. Share each other's <laughs> volunteers. Absolutely. <laughs> we have a, a resource guide that, that's really, really good as mm -hmm. far as, uh, you know, for seniors. And we have it at the office, uh, our central office, and we also have it on our website. So okay. people can go. And if you have a question, if, if, if there's a housing issue, we might um, refer them to economic security. Or if there's, uh, you know, a disability issue, maybe independent living center. So, you know, they, it, it's a very good guide. Well, you mentioned your website. I know we have that available if we can call that up. But uh, that, give us the address as we're getting to the website. How do they find your website? In? It's www.aaaregionx.org. Region, okay. region X being Region 10. We were mm -hmm. the last of the 10 uh, areas on aging regions in the state to be organized. So that's why we're Region X. <laughs> okay. So we have the web address up on the screen. And then the website is where you'll find this resource information, yes. as you said. And then what the, Current activities. Yes. It's a whole wealth of information there without having to come into the office. Yeah, Correct. and they they can look they at the can menu. They can always call us. The menu for the, the oh, there's a month worth of menus there, so they can go okay. to June, uh, whatever date, and and look and see what the senior center because all all seven senior centers normally normally w would have mm -hmm. the same meal on the same day. Now there's occasionally that there could be something that that might the not be the case. Activity for the calendars are also listed right. on the on the, the website for so. the uh, for each of the senior centers. Right. And a lot of these activities involve uh, physical activities or exercise as well. People get out and get to stretch, and stretch a little bit and move. Yes, yes. And mm -hmm. our exercise classes can be very, very slight mm -hmm. for those that, that are that's needed, or they can be more intensive workouts for those that want them. So, so you have all levels of activity right. and exercise. Uh, and our Joplin Senior Center, that we're kind of proud of the, of the, there's a lady that volunteers there and helps us out. And... There's probably between 40 and 50 people in that class every day. You walk wow. in there and they've got all the tables moved out of the way and these people are, get, are going at it. Now they exercise pretty, pretty strenuously. It's a good workout. Yeah, right. It's a very good workout. <laughs> and we also, some of the centers will do things like Tai Chi and mm. the things that help with balance and, right. and fall prevention. And so it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot that goes on. A lot of things that they can do. What about services for uh, maybe the family? You have the ser you're helping the seniors, but maybe the family members who see mom and dad or grandma and grandpa maybe starting to need some help. Do you have 
things where they can come in and say, you know, what do I need to know? Where do I go to help out? They can come to any of the senior centers for information and assistance or into our central office, and mm -hmm. we will be glad to guide them into a direction to give them some helpful hints. And are you seeing more of this as far as the younger generation saying, it's time to start helping mom and dad? Yeah. Or, you know, like right? I say, I, get, I, I do yes. get calls from friends mm -hmm. on, a, on a, a weekly basis, at least, you know, that, that are just wanting guidance. They just want help. They don't know, you know, we, we don't want to put her, him or her in, into long-term care, or we do want to put him or her in long-term care. You know, how do we go about finding a place? Um, is, there, is there home care that we can help get to help us? Mm -hmm. Of course, they, most of them know that we do have the the meals if, right. if, if they need them. Um, but yeah, that's, we're going to see more and more of that, I more think. More of that type of help. And what about, you know, maybe even temporary help in the home if somebody's recovering from an accident? Somebody we do have a program for that in our mm -hmm. office as well. And it's for the homemaker and chore uh, program. And they will come in for six or eight weeks to just do light housekeeping. And it is set up for those those persons that need just short-term assistance. Right. For a short amount of time, I can't get out there and run the vacuum right. or do the work around yeah. the house. And, and, and unfortunately, there, there's a lot of people that are taking care of mom or dad, you know, 24-7. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a program called, it, it's a respite program. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll have folks that can come in for an hour or two, you know, just to give that person time to get out, maybe go to a movie, go shopping, just some, mm -hmm. have some, some downtime because it's important because you can burn out quickly being a, fan, a caregiver like that. Yeah, we hear a lot about the caregiver and the stress that they face. Right. And that, and it's know, very real. It's very stressful. And so you're seeing that, you know, that, yes. that gives them a chance to have some time of their own. Right. <laughs> and, yes. uh, working together. Uh, so families, people coming in seeking this information, you'll have these resources available and the, let them know then what organizations they can call in the community for the medical care or for the yes. uh, nursing home or whatever it might right. be. Right, exactly. Those types of things. Once someone's in a home or a facility, I know you continue services of something called an ombudsman program. So, you know, tell me what that involves. You know, say mom, dad, grandma, grandpa end up in a nursing facility. Basically, the ombudsman is um, a, a liaison between the person that's living in the home and the the administration of, of mm -hmm. that particular nursing home. So, what they do, and, and it's a kind of a volunteer-based program. They, the, the, what the the ombudsman tries to get volunteers that are trained under him or her, right. and they'll go out to the, to the uh, individual um, uh, nursing homes and they'll do a, they'll just walk around, they'll talk to folks there, they, they try to meet at least for a few minutes with everybody, talk, you know, how's it going, is there any issues or any problems, and if someone is having a problem, whether it might be uh, maybe some of their valuables are, are coming up missing or whatever the problem might be then that person then can meet with the administration of the nursing home mm -hmm. because th they don't usually, a, a person living in a nursing home, they don't want to make any waves because they don't want to have any problems. They don't want to get, they're afraid they're going to get kicked out. Yeah, right. And so that person puts them at ease and maybe goes to the administration and says, mm -hmm. hey, you know, Mary is having this issue. Let's get it worked out. And if they can't, then there's a state ombudsman that, that could theoretically then come in and, and try to work the situation out. Are you seeing more of this perhaps because family members aren't there right at hand to visit that person in the care center that, or you know, maybe they visit mom and dad, but they don't, they don't tell the younger people what's happening. I don't really think so. I, mm -hmm. I, I think that most of the families have someone close or a family friend that stays very much. Mm -hmm. The majority of our clients that, that I think that we work with do have some kind of a contact person. Right. You know, so but there are those that have, that have no one. So that's where that ombudsman person is very, very important. And are there cases where they might tell something to the ombudsman that they won't tell their kids? That's true. <laughs> that is true as That's well. very true. You know, that they'll, you know, so they want to, don't want to make the kids worry, maybe. <laughs> right. They, and no. if it's the same person, they see month after month, there's a, a, a trust that builds up there, I mm -hmm. think, with the ombudsman. So. So, are you looking for volunteers? You said that you know they work with volunteers. Is that an area where someone in the community can volunteer? Certainly, ombudsman, and and it's it's more of a if someone really wants to volunteer and, and do more than just deliver a meal occasionally, mm -hmm. because it's a little more intense because there's training involved there. Those folks are going in and, and talking to you know these people, and so right. they need to know what, what they're doing. So if somebody is, is really wanting to get jump in and, and really work with people, that's a good program to do it in. What type of skills are you looking for? I guess good listeners would be one. You know, good listeners, good personality, somebody that can engage you know, with mm -hmm. what for now is a stranger right. easily. So make people feel comfortable. So right. they've enjoyed yes. working with people perhaps throughout their life. Yes, they're retired. They say it's a good opportunity. Let's come in and work with True. people. Yes. Continue to do that. And that particular program is is a program that we contract out mm -hmm. actually, but they can call our office and and we can certainly put them in in touch with the folks that do that. So. Right. 
Now you said the senior centers and classes and so forth, do you have volunteers then who run these exercise classes and do the activities for you? All of our classes and activities are, are normally ran by either volunteers in the senior center mm -hmm. or the boards of the senior centers. So okay. again, that they are volunteers as well on the mm -hmm. boards. Mm -hmm. So. Now you mentioned the boards of the senior center, so even though you have the different facilities, each one has its own little unique composition or mm -hmm. makeup because of the community it's based in. What we're doing yeah. in Joplin is True. different than what you're doing in Newton County or, you know. Right. They, they all have different, uh, each center has their own board mm -hmm. and different activities and, and levels of activities and, and things that they do depending on the size of the facility. Right. So what we may do down at McDonald County at the Knowles Center would not be at the same level that we do here at the Joplin Senior Center. Mm -hmm. So the boards of these centers then are looking as that communication vehicle between the seniors of the community and that center and try what, what do you need, what do we need? The need board works with not only the senior center manager and mm -hmm. staff as well as the clients at the senior centers right. and then they're also they work with our central office as we all work as one big one big group. So we take care of our with everyone. Right. Time Absolutely. Uh, they're, they're an advisory board mm -hmm. and, and they it actually are, are mandated by law that we have advisory boards in the senior centers. And that they will, if there's an issue, they'll come to us and we'll we'll work it out. Mm -hmm. um, most of the most if not all the senior centers are owned by uh, not all, because I can think of one that's not, but most of them are owned by the cities. And uh, so they'll also the advisory board if they're if the floors are needing done or if, you know, whatever the situation may be, and things, right? then mm -hmm. they, they can work with the city on that. And they actually do some of their own fundraising too, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to, to help with things. If they want something new in the center, mm -hmm. uh, they'll, they'll raise some money for it and purchase themselves like a new TV or whatever the situation right. might be. So you would also have a TV area if someone wants to gather there to watch sure. the game with their buddy. We, we do friends. have uh, TVs at every senior center and, mm -hmm. and we have several that, that do come there and, and they'll Especially this time of year, they're all watching the all the rain that we've been having. So right. <laughs> they're they're all very the weather channel. You know, watch the, the weather, weather channel, channel is on a lot right, right now. You know, but, but it's very common to have a TV on at a facility. Mm -hmm. But if the Cardinals or the Royals are playing in the daytime, <sighs> they might be sitting there during the daytime that watching those games as well. <laughs> 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 well, what are the hours of the senior centers? We've been talking in terms about the activities. When can they go there? Most of our senior centers are open by 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. and uh, some of the smaller ones may close at two in the afternoon, but most of them are open to two or three. You would okay. have to call each individual senior center to get their appropriate hours. Their hours. But going through your website, they can find links to those Or centers. the website, yes ma'am. And find out what hours and what's happening within their own community. Well, I know one of the things in the series of programs we're talking about, a lot of questions, the seniors have questions about a lot of things, and Medicare is one of those. And I understand that your agency also has some resources when people, you know, what do I do about Medicare? <laughs> we do, we do. We have a, a, a lady in our office that's, that's very knowledgeable on Medicare and to a certain extent Medicaid. And obviously during that period of time from, I think it's October 14th to December 7th, um, which is open enrollment mm -hmm. for Medicare, uh, she's really, really busy. And we try to get folks, volunteers if we can, to come in and help her with that. But, you know, to, to walk people through that, that whole situation of, of getting signed up with Medicare. And uh, a lot of work with Part D, you know, which is the prescription drug part, mm -hmm. um, where uh, she, there's a computer program where you can put in all the medications that uh, that person may take, and then it will spit out different uh, Medicare Part D plans with different organizations mm -hmm. that, that might be best for that particular person. Mm -hmm. um, and then all, all year long when someone hits that magical 65 age, or actually three months before, three months after, uh, then she'll also work with those folks that come in and, and need help, because it, it's not a simple thing. I've heard that there could be a lot of confusion. People there, saying, there's okay, easy I'm parts of, now and things have to change. There's <laughs> easy parts of it and then there's parts of it that are a little bit more complicated. Mm -hmm. And then there's also help that you can get to pay some of your premiums uh, mm -hmm. if you're low income. And mm -hmm. she can also help people sign up for, it's called LIS, low income subsidies. There's a couple different ones that, that she can help them sign up for. So we're really answering a lot of those questions, maybe the confusions, maybe misunderstanding that their situation is not like their neighbors, but their neighbors tell them something and they're wondering. Yes, you know, right. yes, a lot of hearsay. <laughs> Just clearing up and what are the facts and what is happening along those lines. So you're seeing an increased demand for the services throughout the community. Um, uh, what on the funding side of things? Uh, you mentioned you know you get grants and support, increasing need for contributions. I know Always. you have fundraisers, ways Always. to help you do things. <laughs> you know I've been in the not-for-profit business, not necessarily with this agency, but overall for 
about 16 years, 17 years now, and yeah, it's it, it never that never stops. Mm -hmm. um, our funding does come, like I say, from from the federal government, and and a certain part of uh, state general revenue also comes to us. Oh. And it, it's it's difficult, you know, with the times we've had, you know, to to get the legislators to give us more money. Um, actually, the last couple of years we've been lucky. We have had small increases, but it's kind of brought us back up from, la as of two years ago, we were still working on 2009 budget. Mm -hmm. And and I don't know about you, but you know, my, my costs at home have gone yeah. up a lot since 2009. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, it helps. And, and the companies and the people around locally that donate to us make a huge difference. So if somebody wants to help their local center, they can contact that senior center to help out as well with some of the supplies or any things that you need. Yes, that would right. be nice. And help you a lot in many of those areas. Definitely. Well, I guess you know, going back to the beginning of the definition of your service, if someone were to see you after the show, you know, uh, you know, why should I come to the senior center? What would you say to you know somebody who says, well, I'm retired now. Why should I come in there? You know, what, what's your answer for that? Volunteering or socialization and coming for a good meal. But our senior centers are a family type place. Everybody is very friendly. It's just a fun place to be. Yeah. So especially the socialization, helping people in that Lo area. Loneliness can be a, a really, really big issue with, with some seniors. Mm -hmm. And it really helps to have a place where you can go, meet people, and you make some friends. And, and they, I'm sure, plan and do things outside of the senior center too. I know in our society we hear much about, you know, the family moves away, they're not by mom and dad as they age. Sure. So, you know, so that gives them that outlet where the kids yeah. aren't close at hand. Right. They have that exactly. support in tying that. Well, let's remind people how they can find you, how they can contact you, your offices. Uh, Main office on 15th Street? 15th of Missouri. Okay. Our phone number is 781-7562 for our central office. Our website, uh, aaaregionx.org. Call or come by anytime. And what and are the, your hours for your office to be open? Our office is actually eight to four. Mm -hmm. um, the the if you go to the website, right. also uh, each of the senior centers is listed with their phone numbers. Uh, so if anybody wants to just call a certain senior center, the, the numbers are there too. And as we say, the younger generation looking to help the older generation, you have those resources as the, some, like you say, your friends who have called and say, "What do I do about mom or dad?" Or you know, you have Definitely. that type of material to start maybe even preparing, even though you're not facing that situation now. Right. So when that's very true, you try to I guess you recommend people avoid the crisis. You know, suddenly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. now, many times that's what happens. Is at mm -hmm. the very last minute they're like, "Now what do I do with mom and dad? Mm -hmm. We don't know where to go." So. Yeah. So many turn to us. So start thinking about those or gathering the resources of what your right. options can be and tying that together. Well, Stan and Stephanie, I'd like to thank you very much for joining us today on the program and letting the information for the audience as we're trying to do on this program, uh, folk spotlight on senior issues, keeping the community infor informed. So Thanks thank for having us. I really appreciate it. And I'd like to thank you, the viewers, for joining us on this program. And we're going to continue this series looking at senior issues, everything from, as you saw today, agencies helping others in the community to medical issues, to legal issues, to some of the topics that whether you're a senior or you may be a child or of a senior, things that you might want to look for as we talk about focus on spotlight on senior issues. I'm Judy Stiles. Hope you can join us again. Mm -hmm.